Joining us is a man who suffered under the dictatorship of the so-called Butcher of Uganda, Idi Amin. He was tortured and imprisoned for preaching the gospel and saw many of his friends murdered because of their faith. He's here today to share the many miracles he's witnessed since then. Welcome, Bishop Olukol. Bishop, welcome. Thank you very much. Now, Bishop, tell us a bit about the years under Idi Amin and you being imp imprisoned for preaching the gospel. I got saved in 1968, and uh, there was a freedom of worship in Uganda, 1968, 69, 70. 71 January 25th, wow. that's the time dictator Idi Amin he came to power, which he called himself the British Congress Empire. And he was called Ali, Ali Haji Idi Amin Dada, field marshal, and from there, he gave us a freedom of worship, uh, 71, 72, 73, he banned all the churches, spiritual churches, about 21 of them, and left three religions, Catholic, Anglican, and Muslims. Yet he, he killed the uh, archbishop, the, the Anglican archbishop and others. Yes. Now, when he, when he left those three religions and they moved forward, he killed himself. Archbishop Luhum uh -huh. of Anglican Church. And his soldiers, they killed the superintendent of Pentecostal Assemblies of God. And uh, from there, the prostitution came up. It drove up to all the missionaries and all Asians and started giving the properties of Asians to his soldiers. Let me ask you though, Bishop, um, for you, you were a young, young man, uh, you're still a young man, but you're a younger man and in, young in the ministry. Uh, did you at any point feel like giving up uh, and handing your Bible in because of the persecution from Idi Amin? My brother, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. There's no giving up. Some of the Christians, they give up their Bibles to me. But for me, no. I endured. I moved forward preaching and I was prisoned. I was beaten. I was tortured several times, wow. not only three times in prison, but torturing was too much. Because one day I was in the market, I was preaching, and I packed my bike aside. I have one pound of beef on my, my bike. The soldiers, they came straight away, and they rushed to me, and I ran away, and they picked my bascal, and they put on the truck. They said, this is the fit to my father. Wow. So let's skip forward to uh, years after when things changed in Uganda. Uh, you become the head of one of the churches out there. I've been your leader over 150 churches. Yes. And looking around the world now with uh, Christians suffering in, in Nigeria, in South Sudan, in, in Egypt, in Syria, uh, what can you say from your own experience to our brothers and sisters who are going through imprisonment, uh, going through death right now. What, what can you share with them from your experience to keep them strong right now? Yeah, I want to share with my uh, brethren and sisters all over the world, true prostitution as it is written in the book of Saint First Peter chapter four from verse 12. Dear friends, do not be surprised as the painful trial you are suffering as though something stranger will happen to you. But rejoice that you have participate in the suffering of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when he, his glory will be revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rest on you. Well, that, that's, I mean, I guess for you, having been through it, it has a lot more weight. But finally, let me ask you, because our time has run out, uh, there's reports of many miracles in your ministry over time. And there's one particular one that I was, I was really taken by, a young boy who had been knocked over by a bike, had been killed, uh, and uh, with yes. prayer he was revived. Tell us about what happened, when, where, how did that happen? I tell you, my brother, uh, 
through that suffering, through endurance, God used me. Not only that boy, many people, they got healed. And many, many people, they came to Christ in a big number. In the funerals, thousands of people are receiving Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And one day, I was just waking up and I, I felt something they said fast. I fasted, I went to church, from the church at four o'clock, I came back at my home. I sat outside. The lady came running, telling me the motorbike has killed, has knocked the child at the road. Then I rushed on the road. I found the teeth of the child on the, the road. Boy's teeth and the his voice, blood on the, on the yes, road. Yes, on the road. Yeah, wow. on the paved road. But he'd been taken off to I've hospital. Taken, I've taken to hospital. Okay. Then I rushed. I followed. When I arrived to the uh, hospital, I found the doctor. He's strengthening the boy. He's strengthening his body now to put in the uh, in the mortuary. Okay, so they were packing up his body to yes. put in the in the morgue. That's right. Okay. That's right. Then I rust, I rust my hand, I put on the chest of the boy. In the name of Jesus be healed. When I remove my hand, the boy coughed, and then it, the ribs which are broken came back all. Wow. And straight away the child he cried. Wow, Bishop, thank you so much for sharing with us. And we know there's so much more in terms of miracles and what God is doing that we share. So hopefully, if we can get you back, you tell us more about what God is doing, not only in Africa, but with you all around the world. Thank yeah. you, Bishop, for joining us. Thank you.